In this week's edition of Pass the FE Exam, I'm going to be talking about the latest version of the FE Reference Handbook, version 10.0.1, the only reference material that can be used during the FE Exam, and why it is so important for you to familiarize yourself with it prior to the exam. Before I do that, let me remind you that the FE exam, or Fundamentals of Engineering, is the first step to getting your professional engineering license. And through the videos on this channel, including this one, you will learn not only how to properly prepare for the exam, but how to ensure you pass the FE exam. Now before I jump into today's topic, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the FE exam. And if you leave specific questions in the comments, I will answer them on future videos. Now please note that version 10.0.1 of the FE Reference Handbook applies to FE exams starting from July 1st, 2020 and on. Before you begin the actual FE exam, on exam day, you'll be provided with an electronic version of the Reference Handbook. But I strongly recommend that before you start preparing for the FE exam, you either purchase a hard copy of it or download a free electronic version so that you can become intimately familiar with every aspect of this book. Essentially, you should live with, eat with, and sleep with this book until exam day. The better you know the handbook, the quicker you'll be able to finish problems on the exam, which many times is the difference as to whether someone passes or does not pass the FE exam. So getting to know this handbook may be the most important thing that you can do during your FE exam preparation. Big warning here, you will not be permitted to bring your personal copy of the reference book into the exam room. However, as I mentioned, the computer-based exam, also known as CBT, will provide a PDF version of the handbook for your use during the exam. This PDF version will be very similar, if not identical to the printed version. So you may be thinking, okay, so I have everything I need to ace this exam right in the handbook. Not necessarily. The FE reference handbook does not contain all of the information needed to answer every single question on the exam. Some basic theories, formulas, conversions, and definitions are not included. And in some cases, if special material or equations are required for a question, they will be provided with the question itself. Now, although I'm not allowed to distribute any materials from NCWES here on this video, I can and I will walk you through an outline of what the book contains. Again, this is from the official NCWES Reference Handbook version 10.0.1, which you can download for free on the NCWES website at ncws.org. So here's your outline of what the handbook contains. And just a disclaimer here, this is a reference handbook meaning that it provides equations and basic information related to the topics that I'm about to run through. It is not an FE review book or study guide with sample problems. We will link to some study guide resources in the description below. So here's what the handbook contains. Number one, units and conversion factors such as distinguishing pound force from pound mass. Number two, ethics and professional practice covering topics such as rules of professional conduct, model law definitions, requirements for licensure, and grounds for disciplinary action. This is a very underrated component of being a licensed professional engineer and is one that you should pay a lot of attention to beyond just this exam. Number three, safety, such as job safety analysis, hazard assessment, safety data sheets, signal word, flammability, and risk assessment information. Number four, mathematics. What engineering student doesn't love math? The math section features everything you should know about basic math equations, from straight line and quadratic equations to algebra of complex numbers and trigonometry, and much, much more. Keep the math coming for me. Number five, engineering probability and statistics, such as dispersion, mean, median, and mode values, permutations and combinations, linear regression, and goodness of fit. That's just to name a few. I'm having a statistics class flashback. I just see my textbook flashing in front of my eyes. Number six, the chemistry and biology section, which covers items such as photosynthesis, 
electrochemistry, cellular biology, and composite materials. Sorry, I like math better. Number seven, more statistics. The handbook covers a wide variety of facts on statistics such as centroids of masses, areas, lengths, and volumes. Number eight, the dynamics section with information related to common nomenclature, particle kinematics, impulse momentum, and more. I'm a civil engineer, so dynamics wasn't my thing. Number nine, the mechanics of materials section, covering items such as uniaxial stress strain, columns, and elastic strain energy. Number 10, thermodynamics, with reference information related to the properties of single component systems, the first law of thermodynamics, and basic cycles and psychometrics, as well as refrigeration and HVAC. Number 11, fluid mechanics, which covers the characteristics of static liquid, principles of one-dimensional fluid flow, characteristics of selected flow configurations, and the impulse momentum principle, just to name a few. Number 12, there is also a specific heat transfer section, which focuses on conduction, convection, and radiation models. Why wouldn't there be? Number 13, the instrumentation measurement and control section which focuses on temperature sensors, strain transducers, and control systems. More fun stuff. Number 14, engineering economics, including non-annual compounding, depreciation, and interest tables. Jeez, I wonder if they sell FE exam posters for your dorm room. That was just a joke. Number 15, the chemical engineering section, where you can learn about chemical reaction engineering, mass transfer, and transport phenomena momentum, as well as solids handling and processing. Number 16, the civil engineering section is very intense and covers geotechnical phase relationships, structural analysis, structural design, the design of steel components, hydrology and water resources, transportation, vertical and horizontal curves, and construction modules. That sounds like multiple engineering degrees in one section of the handbook. Number 17, the environmental engineering section covers items related to air pollution, landfill compaction, radiation, water treatment technologies, and energy sources. Number 18, electrical and computer engineering, which covers electrostatics, electrodynamic fields, different circuits, amplifiers, and number systems and codes. It also covers computer networking, communication methodologies, and computer systems, as well as software engineering. Lastly, number 19, there is a section covering industrial and systems engineering, as well as mechanical engineering. I know, those are a lot of topics and items to think about, but one of the keys I want you to take out of this week's video is the importance of familiarizing yourself with this handbook. As I said earlier, you need to constantly be looking it over, reading through it, understanding where things are. Because what I found from my experience taking the FE exam and talking to many others who have, time is the biggest factor. The better you know the handbook, the quicker you solve the problems, and the better chance of you getting that FE on your way to get your PE license. There you have it. There is your breakdown of the FE Reference Handbook version 10.0.1. You can download your free copy by visiting account.ncws.org forward slash login and then downloading the book at account.ncws.org reference dash handbooks. These links are in the description below. I hope you found this week's video helpful. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks weekly to ensure you pass the FE exam. And these are tips that you can't get anywhere else. And believe me, you won't want to miss a single video. We also have some interviews coming up with engineers that recently passed the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I'll read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a question that you want answered. Pass the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week.